Ah, there you are. <laughs> so I just went to grab a cup of coffee. Um, I'm just actually finishing off a pot here. I'll show you it. Just take that out there so you can see. What it is, is it's, it's like the pots we do. This is an old one. This is an, I say an old pot. I built it two years ago, this one, I think. And it was just an open pot. And what did I build it last year? No, I think it was the year before. I can't remember. But anyway, um, yeah, I decided to put a trap in it. Now, the idea was that this pot is only 28 inches wide as opposed to the other ones which go up to three feet. And the tricky thing with them is when you put a trap inside the pot, like that, is it uses up a lot of space. So what I've done is, you can see, literally see it's not like a funnel anymore, it's more like a wall, like a valve almost, where things can sort of, I don't know if you can see this, let me just go inside the pot, you can, things will walk through, but then this comes back and closes up again behind them so that they can't come back through. Or they have more difficulty finding their way back. So, yeah, and as you can see, maybe from there, it's not very wide. Whereas on a regular pot, when you put one in, like that one up there, I don't know if you can see that in the trap, in there, but it takes up quite a bit of space. So the idea was, if I um, do that, then uh, you can make more manageable pots or smaller pots. And I mean, of course, this is built for a full-size net, because obviously we, we, we get brown crab and spider crab, and you don't want to be missing out on a nice big crab as well. You know, if you target one thing, you could have... You could have a six pound spider crab you miss. So that's why I put the big necks in. But yeah, I'm just trying to, um, you know, even though I've made these pots and kind of perfected them over the years and they do catch really well, in the end, quite often when you catch lobsters, you're only going to get like one, two, maybe three if you're lucky. I have had up to five or six that have been big enough, but it's, it's, it's rare to do that. Um, and I have had up to 12 or 13 lobsters in a pot, but not all, all big enough, obviously. Um, so yeah, so you're kind of targeting only one or two lobsters, really. So you don't need a really big pot. I mean, I just make big pots because obviously the biggest problem here is they fill up with spider crabs. So if you get a nice few big spiders, it doesn't take long to fill up a big pot. But now we'll see how it goes. We'll see how this little trap idea works because basically this trap uses less materials. It uses less space so we can make smaller pots. The smaller pots are great for stacking on the boat, fitting in the car, that kind of thing, you know. Um, much easier to, to do. So just ideas, like I say, always always thinking of new things. I mean, I wake up with designs in my head, not just of pots, but fishing lures and all the rest of it. Now I'm going to find out today as well, this camera, I was outside filming the boat and I hooked it with the cable and it, I put it on the grass so I, I wouldn't damage the camera and it flipped it through the air and it landed straight onto the concrete. So cracked and it landed right on the screen part so it's, it cracked the corner of the screen camera seems to have survived because they are built for destruction basically or to withstand anything apart from the screen the screen is the weak point on them and yeah luckily it wasn't the lens cover or the anything else so yeah like I said we'll see it, it will see how that works right well anyway um, if you haven't watched the last video which was the year round up I'd advise you go and watch that one because I, I personally think it's a good one I think there's a lot in it basically a lot we cover a lot talk a lot like this talk a lot but also a lot of clips from last year different fish different species a lot of tips and tricks as well but today we are going to be heading out in the boat it was last year's trip again um, went out and did the pots I think I did some fishing on this one. Ah, oh, that's right we went through a through one of the passes I've only ever been through this gap about four times five times because it's it's so many rocks underneath you and the water gets really shallow in fact it dries in areas when the tide goes out on big tides so quite a dicey one but I could you know if you go all the way around it takes you it takes you 15 minutes if you go through it it takes you like two or three minutes so, so I decided to go through it on this occasion so I'll show a bit of that um, in the video but um, yeah and if you as always if you like the videos don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified, hit the bell icon, and if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. So there you go. Anyway, let's get out there and see if we can get some fish and catch some crabs and catch some lobsters. Well, my original plan was to go out to the U Island, which is the island over there, just right down that way and fish down there. But, there's a but bit of a breeze you can't maybe feel it you might hear it on the camera I don't know but it's coming from behind the land there once we get out there it's gonna get breezy and today is supposed to be a very hot very still day but we 
do have a breeze. And like I said, when the thermals come up, it could pick up. So this tide's coming up, so it's going to get deeper water out there, which makes it everything move quicker. And going behind there, when you come back, you either come through the passage or you go around the back. And going around the back can be deadly if it gets rough. You get a big swirl. Might change the plan. What we will do, we're going to do a couple of pots we've got in the bay here. And then we will we'll try some drilling in the bay. I haven't done that for a while. Years ago, I did used to do it a lot. To fish with the rods in the bay. All the time, there used to be plenty of fishing here, but last three or four years, there's been almost nothing in this bay. So. probably under as well I would think. Find out and get it out. This is actually size. That's a legal one. So going near that rock is not a bad idea. Right next to it. Whether there'll be anything tomorrow, I don't know, because we've got one, which might have been the one that was under it, but you never know, there might be a bigger one. Than that, that seagull. I'm trying to get my bait. And I need every bit because I haven't got a lot of bait again. Right, let's go and check the other pot and get fishing. Whenever you're trailing, especially in shallow water like this, you want to walk close into a bay, you want to put a lot of line out. Just watch out that you don't get a boat coming across your stern. And trail very slowly, keep your engine noise down to a minimum or your engine disturbance. Um, when you're out to sea, you can go a lot faster when you've got deeper waters and that. The thing is, when you're in a bay, when you're motoring around, obviously you've got the disturbance on shallow water, but you've also got like a lot of echoing in that, and you'll find under the water where the sound is bouncing off the rocks, because there's not a lot of water here. When you're out there, it's a lot noisier out there with the water rushing around. Now normally I prefer to stand and cast, but if the fish, if you don't, if you haven't got lots of fish necessarily in that area, like they're spaced out, and this can help you locate them. Sometimes they'll be over there, sometimes over there. And then once you find them, then you can stop in that area and, and do casting instead. This is, like I say, I mean, I do use this technique, but it's also used just to try to figure out where there's some fish. And if you've just got the odd one here and there, well, you just do this. 
Right, I think we're going to head out because this is not not happening at all. I mean, it's prime time now, dawn like this. If you're going to catch us now. It's also the uh, old my record, this spot here for the most bass lost in one session. And basically it was seven fish in a row that I lost using these lures. I lost seven of them, one after another. I think I ended up with like one fish or something stupid. Well, they start getting very shallow in a bit. I wonder if there's enough water to get through it. I mean, there's enough water, but there's also rocks. And you've got to sort of dodge the rocks. I can't remember where the rocks are. I don't know if we we'll go through it. We will pull this in first. So I can see the seabed now, it's getting super shallow. It'll probably go down to three or four foot. Probably even less, <laughs> if we're unlucky. when I come out the other side because I'm pretty certain there's a rock that sticks out of the water over there. Okay, we've got an extra couple of feet of water here. day next to this head of rock. Now, now I have potted here in the past, a long time ago, and I had a couple of nice lots next to it, but apart from that, they really caught much here, so this year there's no pots here for whatever reason, maybe there's nothing here. Worth a try. Well, it's worth putting it there. There's a nice one in there. And then there's this pot, which is right next to that head. Literally drops down the sides, it's almost sheer. Wow, 
up from there. I don't know if it was not the size. Worth cotton next to that. I mean, that one's big enough. That's an absolute beauty, that one. That's old shell on it. That one's too small. That one will be too small. This one I think is too small as well. I'll just check it. I think my gauge is magic. It vanishes every time the other one. But yeah, that's too small. And this one. And this is a lovely one in here. Lovely big one there. So, that was worth putting it there. I'm going to uh, put it back, I think, there as well. That's a nice one. Another one here as well. So obviously the conga starts thrashing around, it can smash the lobster up. Right. Tell this as well just by the amount of weed in the pot. One in there. This one, that's legal as well. So, well, we've got what we need. We've got our five lobsters. We've got five lobsters, so we'll leave it there. Didn't take long to get to today, is it? So, I don't really plan to do these pots today anyway, really. Like I said, I want to go fishing. Female shanker, lady brown crab.
mackerel, big mackerel. Nah, that'll be mackerel. It's just it bounced to the bottom, so I thought it might have been pollock. Right, time to clean up the boat. Get all these bits of weed and that, and then uh, jump in the dinghy and back to shore. I've actually got to get in before the tide gets too high. It shouldn't get too high, it's not supposed to get um, much higher than where it is now. But you never know with this pressure and this swell, it can mess things up.